Hey everybody, the freelancer back again, finally, and finally ready to give you guys what I've been working on for quite a while here. The first video in Sonic the Hedgehog week, the whole point of which being to commemorate the 20th anniversary of my favorite video game character of all time, even more than Samus Aran if you can believe that. And trust me, I find that a little difficult to believe myself. Sorry, that's out of line. So I wanted to start today with a game that's not as well known in the Sonic franchise, predominantly because a lot of people really didn't get to play it uh, way back when. And that game is Sonic CD, which would introduce us to, among other characters, this little lady. Now... If you look at her, if you're not aware, this is actually Amy Rose, or also known as Rosie the Rascal, and this is how she looked when she premiered in the original game. Of course, we got much more used to what she looked like in Sonic Adventure. But the point is that this is where she started. Though it is interesting to note, when they did this game, in the original manual for the American version of the game, they actually referred to her as Princess Sally, uh, because it was meant to kind of tie in with the Sonic Saturday morning cartoon that was on at the time. However, they didn't ca change the character sprite or anything like that, uh, and also the game was developed in Japan, as opposed to Sonic 2 or Sonic 3, which was made here in the States. And <clears throat> what they ended up doing with it was uh, the music was altered when it was brought here. That's been a big controversy about the game, especially when it came out, was that they changed a lot of the music tracks in it. Uh, and believe me, the Japanese soundtrack is really great. But I thought the American soundtrack was just fine too, and I didn't know the difference. You know, especially back in the 90s when it came out, <laughs> We didn't really have the internet, so we didn't know any better. Still, it's been one of those things that's kind of, you know, stuck as a stigma against the game itself. Still, I think it's really good. And Amy herself, when she premiered in the game, was actually eight years old. And when they redesigned the characters, we got what's known now as the modern Sonic and all the various changes to the looks and designs, uh, Amy was the main one that was the most drastically altered, and they aged her up to 12 years old, again, as opposed to being only 8. Furthermore, she's actually based, the design is based from a character that was uh, brought up in a manga that tied in to the Sonic universe over in Japan, similar to the way the Archie comics sort of tie into them here and what they did was they just took that core character made a few alterations to her outfit and then we ended up with her looking like this and the whole idea was that on the outside she looks you know girly and pinkish but in reality she's actually a bit of a tomboy however in her first uh, outing she didn't really get to show that off because she was too busy playing the damsel in distress role Though the idea was that she was meant to go against that grain, it just didn't end up panning out. Still, we got a great game because of it, and also we got introduced to another one of my favorite characters from the franchise, Metal Sonic. So, <clears throat> um, what I decided to do, best way to show the game off to you, was to just play the first level or so of the game and really give you guys an idea of it. Now I will warn you, unfortunately, I had to record off of an emulator and my computer is not exactly the most powerful. So the footage is a little bit choppy. You'll have to put up with that. And I do apologize. And at the same time, I can also say that, and I stated in the video too, uh, you know, I can't condone the use of an emulator. Uh, but again, I had to use it for the purposes of this video. And if you already own a copy of the game, 
you know, you're still within legal limits, supposedly. So, enjoy watching me play a little bit of Sonic CD, and I'll see you guys in a little while. So, of course, with any game, the best way to begin is from the beginning. And right off from the start, you can see it. I'll just stop here for a minute and let you guys look at it. This game looks phenomenal. I just love all the colors and just how vibrant and bright everything is. But it doesn't look garish. It, you know, it's not like a lot of those mascot games that were coming out during the 90s. And right from the start, just to really, you know, kind of showcase to you just how different, how much we went into this game versus the Genesis versions of Sonic. I love, right at the beginning, you can do this. I mean, look at that. That perspective change, that just looks great. I love that. Now, you will notice uh, down in the corner, and there might be some choppiness in the video, and I apologize for that. But for the purposes of recording, it is just easier this way. Uh, I did go ahead and use an emulator. Now, of course, I'm supposed to tell you that emulators are bad and you shouldn't use them, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, for the most part, that's absolutely true. However, I do at least own a copy of this game, so I don't feel quite so bad about doing it. But, otherwise, to really get the full experience, you do need to own the game itself in some form or another. Now, what you're seeing here all the lights and everything going around. They kind of implemented this strange, almost Back to the Future type thing with this game, where as you go through each zone, you can either go to the past or to the future. And the way that Sonic achieves this is by running as fast as he possibly can, as far as he can, until the light finally overtakes him, and he goes, again, either to the past or the future. Uh, and like I say, that really does make me feel like reminiscent of Back to the Future, because, of course, you have to get into a DeLorean and hit 88 miles per hour and go somewhere. But I like it. I like that idea. And, of course, this really expands the game. And, ex and I mean, essentially, you're playing the exact same level that you're already in. It just has a different coat of paint to it, and it does change some of the hazards and various traps and things of that nature. But there's another important element to it, and that is when you go to the past, you're supposed to find these things and try not to get hit. Now, these things, I'm going to pause it so you can look at it, but they're roboticizers. They're taking the plants and the different uh, flowers and so forth and turning them into Robotnik's evil creations. When you destroy these and head over to the goal line, you're then able to guarantee, it'll tell you that you've guaranteed a good future for this particular zone. Now, if you go about collecting all of the time stones, uh, which are this game's kind of version of the Chaos Emeralds, as we got used to in the main Sonic titles, 
you guarantee a good future all the way around for this little planet. However, I'll show you guys the actual special stages where you're supposed to go about getting the time stones, and they are phenomenally different from any of the special stages in the other games. But that's what I always liked about the Sonic games, is that stuff, it all felt familiar. I mean, like this whole game, it feels familiar. It feels like we've done this a million times before. You know, that 2D side-scrolling fun time that we always had with Sonic. But it never felt old. They always added new features and little things to just keep it fresh enough that you never got bored with it. But it was never a big radical change, and that didn't really start happening until the 3D Sonics. And you could argue at length all day long about, you know, good, bad, or indifferent as to how Sonic has benefited from the move to 3D. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about Sonic 3D, which Sonic CD. Sorry, slip of the tongue. You probably noticed as well, there are a lot more checkpoints. I'm trying to get to the future here so you guys can see... Well, we just lost it. I want to show you guys that really dystopian looking future that they've got for this game. Uh, you'll actually see it in the third stage, because what they did with this one, as opposed to Sonic 2, this game actually retains the three stage uh, layout. The difference being that the third stage is always exceedingly short and leads all pretty much directly to the boss. It's only long enough for you to maybe gather up a few rings and so forth that you'll need to survive the boss fight and then face square off against Robotnik. And to the special stage. Now these are really wickedly cool. Uh, honestly what I would find the best thing to compare them to are the early F-Zero or Mario Kart games. The only problem with them that I've really had is trying to adjust to the change in perspective because of course early 2D games that pseudo 3D effect eh, it was really kind of hit or miss because it was hard to really gauge distance and especially with this because of course you have to jump and hit those UFO things. And each stage has, you know, seven or six UFOs or what have you. The problem is you've got that timer there in the middle, and that makes things exceedingly difficult. Because trying to beat that timer isn't exactly easy. Though, I guess, to be fair, these aren't the most difficult stages, because there's nothing to really actually hurt you. It's just a matter of getting around them fast enough to actually do what you need to do. There we go. And this is the first time stone, which, as you can tell, looks remarkably like a Chaos Emerald. The difference being that if you collect all of the time stones, which I believe there are seven of them, you're able to get the best ending to the game. Though, a funny note about that, I actually have found most people prefer what's called the bad ending, just because it has a tiny little scene, no more than a few seconds. It's actually more entertaining to watch than watching the good ending. Uh, and what you'll be seeing at the end of this video actually is considered the bad ending of the game. Now, these boss fights, there is something important to note. They actually, when you hit Robotnik, if you remember in the original games, it took eight hits to take him down. These, it only takes three, but the fights themselves, with the exception of this first one, are actually much more difficult. As you progress further in the game, you'll, you'd will you see what I meant. But even here, you have to wait and hope you don't get hit as you go along. As you see, I just lost all my rings, except for the one. As is any Sonic game, you want to keep at least one ring. And then you hit this pod and release the flowers. Which, I gotta admit, the whole moving to the essence of flowers things, which is actually in the manual, uh, isn't as fun as freeing the animals and seeing them dance around in joyous... Rapture? Whatever. Uh, <laughs> as you 
did in the prior games. Now, here's where I was talking about earlier. This is where we get a first really good look at the newest character in the Sonic franchise. Right here. Rosie the Rascal, or as most people would know her, Amy Rose. And you can see her design is radically different from what we became used to after the Sonic Adventure series. And in fact, in this game, she's supposed to only be 8 years old, and they aged her to 12 in, by the time they rolled around to Sonic Adventure. And the other great character, the one that I thought was a great addition to the franchise, comes in right here. Metal Sonic, man. He is... I love the introduction of Metal Sonic. I mean, I know a lot of people got much more used to uh, Shadow as being the main competition for Sonic. And Metal just had a really strange storyline when you got around to the Sonic Heroes game. Well, not strange, just odd, I guess. But really... The whole Sonic franchise, by the time they moved around to 3D, got a little more complicated than it really needed to be, in my personal opinion. Not bad, but they were going for these strange storylines, especially by the time you rolled around to the 2006 Sonic game, which, of course, less said about it, the better. Um, that one just had a weird, weird story. But you see this zone, it definitely is very reminiscent of the uh, Casino Night Zone from Sonic 2, which is a zone that pretty much is universally loved by almost any Sonic fan I've ever met. I, I've never met any of them where you say Casino Night Zone and people go, oh god, I hated that zone. Most people absolutely adored it. And I'm one of those people. Though it did have its kind of frustrating bits just because you get stuck on the bumpers or things like that. Something like this. Earn a few extra points just in case you needed them. Though this one does feel like it kind of combines uh, Casino Night and Spring Hill. The problem is I'm a little disappointed in how I'm going about doing this because these zones, in comparison to even Sonic 2 or Sonic 3... The zones in this game are humongous. And especially if you start doing the time traveling and going to the past and going to the future and really trying to play the game as it was properly designed, you'll waste a lot of time. And that whole 10 minute time limit that you have really becomes a pain. Let's see if we can get to the past and show you what the casino would have looked like a different time. This is actually one of the easiest ways to move back and forth through time is to get yourself on a spring or something and just go back and forth until you move where you want to go. And this is the casino zone in the past. As you can see, well it's not called the casino zone, I keep calling it that. But you can see way different. And there I just got the roboticizer, didn't even know I was coming across it. So I've at least guaranteed a good future for this zone. And the other thing to note, and you can't hear it because I disabled the sound, is how different the music is as you move through each each of the stages, the future, the past, etc. Uh, though I can't talk about the music without bringing up... I love this. This is a hologram of Metal Sonic stomping on a rabbit. If that's not hilarious and horrible all at the same time, I don't know what is. Let's stop him from doing that. But that's to show you what he was doing while he was here. And you actually see little animals jumping around. But again, they weren't actually turned into robots. It, were the, it was the plants that were turned into them, which I find so incredibly strange that they went that route. But there again, as I stated before, a different development team. This was actually made by made in Japan... Whereas the other Sonic games that we got used to, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, etc., were actually American-developed. Um, that's why this one has slightly different-looking sprites and definitely different running animations. 
things of that nature. And we'll show you another special stage. Can't guarantee you how well I'll do with these because I find they do get more difficult. But it is nice that they change the background and you can see different areas, though the objective remains identical. And missed one already. You do get a little bit of help in that the lights come on on the UFO when you're in close enough proximity to jump at it. Though again, it's still that distance gauging problem. Though I will admit that I'm impressed, Sonic controls exceedingly well in these portions. It's it's not the controls that are the problem. It really you do feel like you're the problem. But if you run out of time or hit too many bumpers, the stage is over. So that's where the difficulty really ramps up. You got to watch out for that. So really that's it in a nutshell. I mean, this is Sonic CD. Ah, here's what the future would look like on a if you got the bad future for this zone. You can see how nasty and ugly it is. And we got to get down here because what you actually have to do is chase Robotnik up. They really got unique with the way you went about fighting the fighting him in this game. There we go. Again, not difficult, but definitely entertaining, to say the least. Now, if you're interested in playing this game, there are really two ways to go about doing it. One way is to get yourself a Genesis, and then get yourself the Sega CD attachment, and then hunt down a copy of the game, put all that together, and play. Unless you're a big Sega fan and a really big Sonic fan, at which point you probably already own this game or at least know about it and are intending to get it, uh, I really wouldn't recommend that route. What I would recommend is this. The Sonic Gems Collection. Now, in the U.S., we only got it on the GameCube, and I found it recently, as you can see, for $13, and that's not a bad deal, considering you get the Sonic CD, you also get Sonic the Fighters, or Sonic Championship, as it also has been known in the West, and Sonic R, which, uh, uh -huh. you also get six Game Gear games, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Sonic Spinball, uh, Sonic Triple Trouble, Sonic Drift 2, Tails Sky Patrol, and uh, Tails Adventures. So, it's a pretty good package, I think, and especially for that price. Um, if you're in the UK, you can actually pick up uh, this on the GameCube or on the PlayStation 2. Now, again, as I was mentioning with the music, the North American release has the North American music track. Uh, I believe the European release, it, if you play the GameCube one, it only has the PAL, the North, the, the UK version. Whereas if you play the PS2, it, I think it has both on it. I'm not, a, I'm not 100% sure on the details of that. You guys will just have to look. Uh, either way, it's a great way to go about playing it. And it's a great collection. And, you know, if you have a GameCube or you have a Wii, that's a lot easier, and they're a lot easier system to get a hold of than it is to find the Genesis and the Sega CD attachment and the Sega CD, the Sonic CD disc. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this, and next up I've got the bad ending to the game with the U.S. soundtrack in it. Sorry, but I like that song. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this, and Sonic Week continues tomorrow. Later.
the dark, to the light, it's a supersonic fly, gotta keep it going. 